Do you know that we frequently pick an ineffective and inadequate hypernatremia treatment and hence the sodium wars for the next one to two days? Take a look at this example. A 60 year old gentleman, 80 kilo, present to the ED with severe shortness of breath and was diagnosed with severe bilateral pneumonia and COPD exacerbation, intubated, placed in mechanical ventilation. In the ED, sodium was 143, 2.5 liter of normal saline given as part of sepsis, sepsis protocol. On day Day one of admission morning lab sodium was 145 nothing was done day two morning lab sodium was 152 d5w star at 75 mil per hour and day three morning lab sodium was 155 what went wrong with this patient the patient clearly have some water deficits even from the time the lab was showing sodium 143 plus we give some isotonic solution and then even next day the patient was having more water deficit as expected and nothing done the treatment should have been started right here to give some water in any form whether in form of half an s d5w or free water 3 ng tube and even here we should have done it there is unnecessary delay in the treatment before we continue remember that you can get a summary of this video by subscribing to my substack the link is provided below hypernatremia which is sodium more than 145 mL per liter means water deficits in the extracellular fluid or way less commonly in increase in sodium load. Decreased water in ECF can happen because of inadequate water intake, either there is no water access or the patient is NPO, cannot drink water for a reason or another, or water loss. And water losses can be sensible or insensible. So insensible water losses, water losses that happen with sweats, stool, and hyperventilation, they are estimated to be around 500 to 1000 mil per day. This is variable based on the patients and and other factors like fever, tachypnea, etc. But roughly 500 to 1000 cc. Sensible water losses, either renal or extrarenal. Renal, we have osmotic diuresis and arginine vasopressin deficiency or what we call diabetes insipidus. And extrarenal like in diarrhea or excessive sweats. Increased sodium load like giving hypertonic solutions, like giving large loads of normal saline. Remember normal saline is mildly hypertonic or giving 3% normal saline or sodium bicarb all these solutions can give high load of sodium and lead to hypernatremia or salt poisoning which is very rare i've never seen it but it's reported in clinical practice ongoing water losses mean sensible and insensible water loss remember insensible estimated 500 to 1000 mil per day uh, most of the time i use 500 in my calculation now sensible the renal water losses can be measured if you want to using this equation which again it's a rough estimates urine volume multiplied by one minus the sum of urine sodium plus urine potassium divided by serum sodium you don't need to memorize it you can look it up but again you need to order urine sodium and urine potassium and you need to measure the urine volume extra renal is very hard to estimate the water losses in diarrhea now water deficit calculation all of you know this equation the total body water multiplied by serum sodium divided by 140 which is normal serum sodium we consider that minus one and the total body water is a percentage of the lean body weight not the actual body weight remember that so it's 60 percent in adult males and children 50 percent in adult females and elderly males and 45 percent in elderly females now correction rate how fast should we correct the hypernatremia now there is something again like hypernatremia there is acute and chronic hypernatremia most hypernatremia cases in the hospital you will be dealing right here here, chronic hypernatremia with few exception I'll talk about them at the end of this video about acute hypernatremia which present less than 48 hours in these cases acute hypernatremia we need to provide the whole water deficits we need to give it in one day regardless how small or how big we need to drop sodium back to normal as soon as possible because this improves survival believe it or not in acute hypernatremia in chronic hypernatremia whether the patient is symptomatic or asymptomatic we drop it by 10 mL equivalent per 24 hours. Some say 12, but I think the sweet spot is 10 mL equivalent per 24 hours. That's the number you should target in chronic hypernatremia. Let's take the previous
previous example we mentioned at the beginning of this video the guy was 60 year old male patient mechanical ventilation his actual body weight was 80 kilo and sodium was 155 as you remember now the goal is we need to drop this is a chronic hypernatremia the goal is to drop now this is a chronic hypernatremia and you may wonder again he came in sodium 143 then went to 145 then 150 then 155 this gotta be acute hypernatremia and that's what I want you in clinical practice really there is only few exception that we consider acute hypernatremia everybody else has some element of chronic hypernatremia bear with me to the end of this video so the goal is to drop sodium by 10 mL equivalent per 24 hours the water required in 24 hours will equal remember this water deficits that we're going to use the calculation the equation for then add the ingoing water losses insensible or sensible water losses very important most people focus here give this only and then they they wonder why the sodium is not coming down or why the sodium even worsening because they don't calculate the ongoing water losses for that day remember that now water deficits we said total body water 155 divided by 140 minus 1 and remember lean body weight for this patient you need to calculate Calculated, I think roughly 60 kilo then 60 multiplied by 0.5 because 60 year old we consider elderly multiply by 0.107 that means 3.2 liter that's the total water deficits to get the sodium down to 140 from 155 because it's more than 10 mL equivalent we talk about 15 mL equivalent then I need to drop it over two days over 48 hours that means 1600 mL per day plus ongoing losses for that day so 1600 plus 500 those ongoing losses because there is only insensible losses there is no sensible losses with this patient then it's 2100 mil per day 2100 divided by 24 that means 87.5 mil per hour now I want to show you another trick we use in clinical practice pay close attention here the same equation if I want to drop it for 1 mil equivalent from 141 to 140 it will mean I need 3 mil per kg of lean body weight to drop the serum sodium by one mil equivalent. I did the calculation so you don't have to worry, but I want you to remember that three mil per kg of water will decrease, of lean body weight will decrease the serum sodium by one mil equivalent. So it may mean 30 mil will needed be needed to drop the sodium by 10 mL equivalent and this remember we use the percentage 50% of lean body weight or 0.5 which is mainly for females adult females and elderly males but I you can roughly use it with all patients it will give you a rough estimate that will miss by a few hundreds more or less that's if you're tired you don't have time so almost you will get roughly closer to the amount using the full the, the exact calculations so let's use the example we just used so we said the lean body weight was 60 30 mil by 60 we need 1800 cc mil per 24 hours required to drop sodium by 10 mil equivalent from 155 to 145 so water to be given is 1800 plus the 500 the ongoing losses that 2300 very close right from 2100 so the rate will be 96 mil per hour the way we monitor we have to repeat sodium level every four to six hours to assess the adequacy of treatment and very important I see a lot of residents say oh they may start making changes based on morning labs but remember we calculate 24 hours from the time the treatment is started not the time the treatment order is placed you have to go and ask the nurse when did you give the first dose or when did you start the infusion or the free water whatever we're giving and based on that time that's the beginning of the 24 hours remember that what kind of water we give we need to this is all water replacement right either we give free water or or NG tube or pig tube and this is my favorite and the best and most effective to me treatment or D5W give it IV and remember maximum is 150 mil per hour or half normal saline that 1000 cc of half normal saline is basically 500 mil of normal saline mixed with 500 mil of free water that will give you 1000 cc of half normal saline so we give it IV and usually give double the D5W rate because a bag of 1000 cc C of D5W will give you 1000 cc of free water and 1000 cc of 0.45 or half normal saline will give you 500 ml of free water so 50% of the bag is free water only so you need to double the rate of the D5W now let's apply it to our patients so that means our patients will get 
remember 383 mil of free water q6 right or 96 mil per hour if we're going to use d5w so if we're going to use oral free water we give it every six hours so you can give it every four or every two just do the calculation or d5w 96 mil per hour or the 0.45 or half ns we double the 96 is 192 mil per hour remember that now this is a quick comparison between the free water d5w and 0.4 of course this is to me more natural or ng tube or pig tube here ivs water content 100 100 and 50 percent rate literally there is no limit here the patient can drink a whole liter in less than an hour or even in half an hour or even in one set right the maximum is 150 mil per hour here up to 1000 cc an hour if we want to although that will give them large sodium load as well so you need to look into that and that can in worsen volume overload effect on blood sugar none of course worsen hyperglycemia and none here electrolytes none in the free water none in the d5w but sodium and chloride in half an s right now volume depletion and hypernatremia very important you get a patient who is volume depleted in the ed severely dehydrated and volume depleted but the sodium is 160 what do you do in hemodynamic instability the patient's tachycardiac hypotensive or signs of severe volume depletion renal failure give isotonic solution don't worry about the hypernatremia now give two three four liters whatever you need to stabilize the patients once the patient stable you can switch to hypotonic solution like half an s instead of isotonic solution and other cases what you could do you can start you can give isotonic solution and start d5w or free water if the patient can take po simultaneously at the same time rate of correction again we said 10 mil equivalent per 24 hour x in chronic hypernatremia x except in acute hypernatremia, which is hypernatremia present less than 48 hours. The definition of this less than 48 hours, I want to consider that only in the following cases. DI, it's uncommon of course, DI patients who suddenly stop or lo lost access to their treatment or salt poisoning, very rare if somebody ingests a massive amount of salts that contain sodium and critical hyperglycemia without water replacement, I'll come to that. But these are the cases that we really need to think of possible acute hypernatremia so we need to replace the whole water deficits in 24 hours because this improves survival there is no correction limit don't worry even if the sodium is 180 need we need to drop it to 145 in one day now how do we do it now this is the d5w remember here we said there is the maximum 150 mil per hour it doesn't apply here we give three to six mil per kg the maximum 666 mil per hour now why they picked 66 666 mil per hour i don't know that why this particularly this number but if you give 700 is it wrong of course not if you give 500 is it wrong of course not now if you can give free water orally of course that will be very helpful because you can give 500 cc of free water in less than 30 minutes right the goal is to drop sodium level to less than 145 as quickly as possible remember that you need to add to these to the water deficit the ongoing losses remember very important so if the patient is peeing one liter every couple of hours and already has deficits let's say of four liters you need to give the deficits plus you need to replace that one liter every two hours if you don't we will never catch up with that so remember the ongoing losses you have to give it once achieve again unless the issue is fixed we need to make sure that water going in is more than water going out to keep that sodium level within normal range let's take this example 35 year old lady inmate with diapers and sibirus, uh, central di on desmopressin she stopped desmopressin for two days sodium 165 lean body weight was 50 kilo so water deficit is 4.5 liters so i need to give this within one day as soon as possible for 4500 divided by 24 that means 187.5 mil per hour plus ongoing loss so i can give it as d5 or half an s double the rate or you can give it as free water plus ongoing losses in acute hypertrimine you need to monitor sodium every two hours 
until sodium is corrected very important so you may need to put them in icu these patients in order to get these labs on time now in critical hyperglycemia once we treat it so the glucose move intracellularly the water will follow accordingly right which means the sodium concentration can quickly go up the quick correction of glucose can lead to brain swelling right brain edema which is dangerous of course plus it can cause acute hypernatremia that can be dangerous and this is mainly in pediatrics population where it can be really dangerous best things here is to make sure that the blood glucose drop by 50 to 70 milligram per deciliter every hour don't go from 700 a blood sugar to 500 in one hour and then the next thing it's 200 in another hour so you can induce this problem and the second thing if sodium is normal or high use hypotonic solution if the sodium is low or the patient is hemodynamically unstable you use isotonic solution so that's very important to remember in the end if you found this video useful please give it a like share it with your colleagues and i'll see you next video